Hello there, and welcome to the Fish Tank Bar. Today we're going to review a fish that's near and dear to my heart, and that's the Xenotoka eisenai. Like its other Xenotoka cousins, the males of this species have blue and orange on the back of their bodies, which makes them absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, as the title states, there was a post recently from the Gadead Working Group stating that the original location where this fish was found is now underneath a Walmart. So let's go ahead and dive in and learn more about this wonderful fish. The Xenotoka eisenheim is native to the state of Nayarit in Mexico, where it can inhabit a wide variety of different habitats. Unfortunately, this fish is now endangered in the wild due to habitat destruction, lack of water, and the introduction of non-native species. This particular location that you're looking at in the video is the oldest Gadead species in the hobby, having been collected by Robert Rush Miller in 1955 at Manatiel El Sacristan. Like I said in the opening of this video, there was a post detailing that the spring where this fish was found is now underneath the Walmart. The post was also asking for someone to be a coordinator for this species. Since I have quite a few of these fish, I volunteered to be that coordinator. If you have this fish, please contact the email on the screen with your name, location, and number of individuals that you have. This species is just one of the fish that the Gadead Working Group is focusing on for 2025. In the description of this video, I'll list all the focus species as well as their contact emails. I also do have a second location of Eisenheim that are from Rio Compostela that was discovered in 2000. This fish is part of the Eisenai complex, which includes the Xenotoka Eisenai, Xenotoka Lion's Eye, and Xenotoka Dodroy. All of these fish were once called Eisenai, but are now separate species. Since the males of all these fish look very similar, I would make a concerted effort to keep all the location information to make sure that you have the correct species. So let's go ahead and talk about the care for these fish. These fish will get about three inches long, and I'm currently keeping them in a 40 breeder, since I do have quite a few fish, and I'm also looking to increase their numbers. You can keep a pair of these fish in something like a 10 gallon, but I would really prefer a 20 gallon for a small group, and a 29 gallon would be even better. In terms of care requirements, I would say that these fish are pretty hardy, as long as you have some basic understanding and experience with basic aquarium care requirements. Since these are Gadeids, you will need to keep in mind the temperature by not allowing them to get too warm. Though I have found this species to be a lot more tolerant than a lot of other Gadeids. I've even kept these fish outside in the summer with no ill effects. These fish do prefer harder water and do fine in the fish tank barn where my pH is around 7.8 to 8.0 and my GH and KH is around 300 parts per million. From a filtration perspective, I found that these fish will do well with a sponge filter and a heavily planted tank. I have found that the plants help with both filtration as well as fry protection. In this particular tank, the plant of choice is guppy grass primarily for fry protection. I have found these fish should not be picky eaters and will eat a wide variety of foods. I will regularly feed my fish a mixture of flake foods that include the extreme krill, extreme spirulina, extreme soulfly flakes, and a small amount of blackworm flake that I get from Cunningham Tropicals. I will also mix in the aquarium co-op fry food from time to time, as well as the aquarium co-op community floating pellet. While the Xenotoka eyes and eye is a live bearer, like your guppies and platies, there are some stark differences. First of all, the males do not possess a gonopodium, but instead have a notch on their anal fin, called an andropodium, while the females just have a rounded anal fin. The andropodium serves the same function as the gonopodium on a guppy or platy. The gestation period for Gadeids is around 60 days, compared to the 30 days for most other bacillid live bearers. Also, the fry will come out a bit larger than your typical live bearer, and there will be fewer fry released, oftentimes less than 10. The fry are also attached to the mother by an umbilical cord structure called a trophotyania. Once the fry are born, they will readily eat a wide variety of foods, from crushed up flake food, baby brine shrimp, and more. I did struggle with breeding this fish for a couple of years, but I'm unsure if it was due to fry predation or the age of the fish. I didn't have any luck with these fish until I put them outside in summer tubs. After being out in the tubs, I've seemed to have good luck with fry ever since. One thing that I'll have to caution you on is to not sell your younger fry until you have a large colony going. I have found that with a lot of good aid species, the fish will breed when they are younger and then stop breeding once they get older. As with most other live bears, I would find adding plants as fry protection to be very helpful. So now that we've learned about the Xenotoka eyes and eye, let me tell you where to find this fish. While a fair number of eyes and eye species are available in the hobby, I would say that the eyes and eye from Elsa Kristen are not the easiest to find. Though it may be easier to find eyes and eye from other locations. I originally found my group of Elsa Kristens 
from the ALA convention auction in 2022, and then was able to supplement it at a local aquarium club auction. To find these fish, I would highly recommend checking out Aquabid, and then after that, checking out the American Live Air Convention that has two auctions. The main auction that I spoke about a couple moments ago, as well as the Good Aid Working Group auction on Friday night. There are also local live bear clubs like the Chicago Live Bear Association, as well as your other local fish clubs. These might be able to provide you access to fish as well. Once you find your new Eisenheim, I would implore you to keep all the collection information and pass that information on to fellow hobbyists when you decide to sell fry. You never know, you might be the only person keeping that particular location for these fish. I really hope you enjoyed looking at one of the original species in the Good Aid hobby. If you happen to come across the Elsa Christian location of this fish, I would highly encourage you to contact me at the email on your screen. If you want more information on this and other Good Aid species, I would highly recommend that you check out the Good Aid Working Group website, which I'll put in the description. At the end here, I'll put a link to my other Good Aid care guides, as well as my last fish from tour. So with that, thank you for watching, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.